In Design Shop, you have a lot of different ways to select elements, rotate them, scale them, and generally manipulate them on screen. So let's take a minute and let's look at how to first select them, and then we'll start rotating and scaling and slanting those elements. So to start, there are a couple of different places um, that I can select elements. And the first one is in that view window. So this main area here. And the easiest way to select an element is sim simply to click on it. And when I select that element, a resize edit box will come up around it. So I have those little box, uh, little black boxes around everything. And then if I want to select multiple elements, I can hold control and click on another element. And you'll notice as I'm doing this, the elements that I have selected um, show up a little bit bolder than the other elements. And that's just a visual clue that you actually have those selected. If I want to deselect an element, or uh, when I'm doing multiple ones, I can just click on it again and it will deselect. If I want to deselect all of them, I can click in a blank area of my view window and that will deselect them. Um, another way to do that is to click and drag a box around my elements and then any element that is contained completely within that box will be selected. If I want to deselect again, I can click outside of that box or select again. I can go to edit and deselect all and that will deselect them. Um, I, when I'm working on something and I'm zoomed in, I may be within that selection and not have a white space uh, to zoom out to. So if I'm in here and I have um, a bunch of things selected, I have no area in which to click out of to deselect. So edit and deselect all is going to be my best way to do that. And if you want, you can go to tools and accelerator editor and go to deselect all and set up your own keyboard shortcut for that. Um, for me on my, uh, on my personal computer, on, on my work computer that I digitize a lot on, I actually have this command set up for me um, as just the tab key. So if I'm in there and I've, I've got a bunch of things selected and I'm too zoomed in and I, I can't deselect, Rather than going to edit and deselect all, I can just hit the tab key and I'm good to go. So if you want to set up those kind of keyboard shortcuts for yourself, um, it's available in the accelerator editor. Um, so that's completely available to you. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up on this computer as well. So I to set that up, again, I went to tools and accelerator editor. I found deselect all. And honestly, by find, I clicked in that list and I started typing because I didn't want to scroll that far and it will go to the command that I want. Um, I'm going to set that up to tab. So I click in this select new shortcut key box. I just press the tab key. I hit assign and OK. And now if I have everything selected, if I just hit the tab key on my keyboard, it deselects. So you've got the ability to set yourself up with some keyboard shortcuts. Um, that's one that I use quite a bit and you can make that fit how you're used to working or, or other programs that you are familiar with their keyboard shortcuts you can make our keyboard shortcuts kind of match that all right so other ways to select things let's kind of expand this stuff out a little bit when I have something selected um, it is selected in the view window but you'll also see it selected in the project view and so as I select this guy over here, you'll notice that this guy right here just got selected as well. All right, uh, if I want to select multiple elements, um, or just select an element in the project view, you can do it by clicking on it. To select multiple elements, I can click on one element in the project view, and then I can hold Shift, click on another element, and it will select everything in between them. So using Shift, when in the project view allows you to select multiple consecutive elements. So let's click on a different one. And then if I hold control, I can select non-consecutive non elements. So I click on one, hold control, click on others, and I will select just the ones I'm clicking on and not the elements in between. So shift does consecutive, control does non-consecutive. And then again, to deselect, I can click in a blank area or go to edit and deselect all. Or if you set up a keyboard shortcut for yourself, you can always use that 
as well. Okay, um, as I have something selected, I have that and I just selected at the project view, so I have everything in there selected. Um, other options for selecting everything, you can do Control A um, to select all. And if I go to edit, I can see that select all is there. If I want to select the entire design, I could uh, use Control and Shift and A. And so that would be a big difference if I had multiple designs within a project. Um, those two would, would play very differently. All right. and and. While we're in here, if you look at deselect all, you can now see the keyboard shortcut that I set up in there with that accelerator editor um, is just the tab key. And that's only on this computer because that's what I set it up as. Remember that uh, your uh, so order is the order that things appear in this project view. So keep that in mind as you're working, um, as you're selecting and, and if you're moving things around that can, can definitely affect that. All right, so let's go ahead and select this again. I'm going to zoom out a little bit more. Uh, not that far. There we go. All right, so as I have that um, selected, I have that resize edit box around it. And I want you to look down on the scale bar down here, but I also want you to look kind of below it. As I'm beginning to manipulate these things, you will get kind of numerical feedback as to what you're doing. So I'm going to come over here and uh, if I grab one of these corner handles I can scale my design. I can scale it any which way I want. The software is not going to limit you. It can let you do all kinds of crazy things like scale it down to that. Um, you'll notice that my stitch count just changed, my size just changed, and again all of that is kind of right down here. Um, software's not going to limit you. I can scale it that far in my design in in my design shop. However, my actual sew out's probably not going to end so well if I do that. Probably going to get a lot of thread breaks. So let's just uh, go back in and undo. There we go. And then. Let's scale this again. And as I'm scaling, look down on the bottom and you can see the scale both in X and Y, as well as the dimensions. So percentage and dimension, that's pretty cool. If I want to scale proportionally, so I lock that X and Y, I can hold shift and it will scale proportionally. So now no matter where my cursor goes, if it's a little bit too low or a little bit too high, it's still gonna lock those two and it will scale proportionally. Right. If I want to go from the center out, I can hold Alt and it will scale from the center out instead of from one corner to the other. So I'm going to do undo twice to get back to what I was doing before. If I want to do both, I simply hold both keys. So Shift scales proportionally, Alt scales from the center out, and you can use them in com combination. Now, uh, I, you've watched me uh, scale with these corner handles and they scale the whole design they scale both X and Y but if you want to scale just one or the other you can grab one of these side handles and scale and again alt works with that shift works with that um, both works with that so you can scale just the width just the height depending on which handles you select to, to start scaling with. All right, so let's look at uh, having this selected. You just saw me scale this graphically. Let's go ahead and look at doing this with um, some numbers. So if I want something very specific, if I want to scale this to instead of nearly five inches, if I want to scale this to six inches, I can come down here and in this box I can type six and I can hit enter or I can move my cursor outside of that box and it will scale to six inches. As long as this icon is selected, this is my lock aspect ratio, as long as that's selected it's going to scale proportionally. If I deselect that I can scale it either which way, I can scale the width independently or the height independently. And as I'm scaling this you'll notice 
as these numbers change, my stitch count changes. And so as I'm scaling up or down, my stitches are filling in or being removed as needed um, to keep those densities appropriate for whatever you have set. All right, so with that uh, scaling, with a lot of embroidery, you may have heard, you know, don't don't scale too much, um, and and there's a reason for that. As you are dealing with embroidery files, um, expanded files are a little bit less flexible than wireframe. Um, wireframe are shapes with uh, stitch properties in them, and as you scale them up, they will fill in for you. Um, expanded files are a little bit more rigid. They are just the plotted out stitches. So as you scale them up, the stitches typically would get farther apart. As you scale them down, they get a little bit closer together. So scaling them up a bunch would tend to make designs look a little bit gappy. Um, and scaling them down too much would tend to make stitches a little bit tight. It might start to ripple. Um, with smaller stitches, you might start sewing smaller than your needle. So that's why those things are, are often set. Now, with Design Shop, by default, we have expanded processing on. So if you have an expanded design and you scale it up, it will kind of try to figure out what those stitches are and mimic the way that a wireframe works. So it would fill in stitches for you or take them out as you're scaling up or down. But um, you still want to be a little bit cognizant of, you know, scaling too much can distort the design a little bit more than you were thinking. And typically what you'll hear is stay, stay around, you know, 10 to 20 percent for an expanded. And with wireframe, you can do a little bit more. Typically up is easier to scale than down. Scaling down, you tend to get to thread breaks faster than scaling up just because you start shrinking kind of those dramatic turns and, and those edges to where you start getting uh, smaller than your needle. So that's why you hear those things and those are kind of some guidelines. Um, that being said, I break those guidelines all the time. So don't stress too, too much, but if you do scale it and then you go and sew it and you start seeing problems, realize that that might be what that's caused from. All right, so we've scaled it to a specific width or a specific height. If you want to scale it by percentage, you can come down and click on the H or the W, and then you have the ability to scale the width by a percentage. And again, you have a lock for if you want to lock that aspect ratio. If you want to uncheck it, you can scale the width or the height um, disproportionately. You can, you can scale one independently of the other. Okay, so now that we've scaled things, let's look at how to rotate things. Now, when I have this menu up, you can already see that I can come in here and type in, say, 90 degrees. And if I hit enter, it will rotate my design 90 degrees. So I've got the ability to rotate by a specific degree. Let me hit un, uh, get out of there and hit undo. Another thing that you'll notice is when I have these uh, selected, I have my resize edit box where these uh, boxes are solid. If I click inside that box again, they will hollow out. And when that happens, so I'm talking about you know, these boxes here, they'll hollow out They're all the way around. But if you also notice, there is that guy right in the middle, that circle with an X in it. Let me clear this out of here. And then I can go outside of those corners and I get a rotate icon. And if I click and drag, I can rotate my design. And if you look on the bottom of the screen, you'll see that right now I'm rotating it 45 degrees. And I can let go and it will rotate to that amount. I'm going to hit undo and we'll do this again. So I select an element. It's got the resize edit box around it. When I click inside that box, it goes to rotate mode. So you're either in resize edit mode, which is scaling, or rotate mode. If you tend to stutter on the mouse a little bit, another option is to right click within that box and choose which mode you want to be in. Resize edit, right click, rotate. So you've got that option as well. Um, we were just rotating using that corner. It rotated right around 
that little pivot point right in the middle. If I hold, uh, hover my mouse over that, I get a different icon. I can click and drag, and I can move that pivot point anywhere inside or outside of that box. And now if I drag, it will rotate around that point. So instead of rotating around that center, you can change the point around which it rotates, um, which is really handy for doing things like flower petals where you want to kind of rotate that out and move around the center of the flower, but you don't want to redigitize all those petals. You can just duplicate it, move your rotate point to the center of the, the flower and kind of drag that around a little bit. Also within resize edit mode, if you go over the top or the bottom, you can slant your design. If you go over the sides, you can skew your design. So you've got a lot of kind of manipulation tools in your uh, design shop with rotating or slanting or skewing. All right, so let's undo that a little bit again. Go back to something a little bit more normal. If you want uh, to see these numbers in a different place, you can also right click and go to scale to see these in a slightly different place. Or you could go to right click and properties and there's a scale in here as well. And they all work the same. It's just where you prefer to find your tools and, and where you prefer to use them. All right, one more thing while we're in here, we'll look at these uh, mirror buttons. Um, if I have something selected, I can click on this mirror button and it will flip one way or the other. So this is where it's going horizontally or I can flip it vertically. So you've got a lot of different tools available to you to uh, select your designs, your elements, slant them, skew them, rotate them, scale them. And uh, hopefully you now understand a little bit better where you can find all of those tools and you can edit your designs a little more easily now.